Howdy folks. So today I want to talk about instruction sets and how they relate to processor performance. And I want to go about doing this using an analogy. So for my analogy, I want you to imagine that we have three young children, let's say they're toddler age, and they are each going to represent a different processor. And each of these children, you give them, um, you can give them, you know, simple instructions, simple commands, and uh, if they understand that command, they'll do that action for you. And of course, just like all processors, like all programs, the, at the end of the day, we want some useful output. And in our analogy, the useful output is we want each of these toddlers to draw us a picture of a house. So the first toddler, we have to instruct uh, him how to draw a house. And this one is pretty young and he only knows how to draw lines. But that's okay, you can draw a house with lines. So you say, draw a line from here to here, draw a line from here to here, draw a line from here to here. And after a sequence of commands, about 15 commands for the house we're looking at, you get the house output you wanted. So toddler one, totally capable of drawing a house. Toddler two is uh, he's maybe in the, maybe he's in senior kindergarten. He knows a little bit more than toddler one. Of course, he can draw lines too, but he also knows what a rectangle is and he can draw rectangles too. So now we can, again, get him to draw a house by now, instead of using lines everywhere, we can now sort of optimize our instructions, optimize the commands, and we can actually specify, we just want rectangle here that's this big, this, this wide, this high, another rectangle here, another rectangle here, and then a couple lines here and there. And what you'll immediately see is that there will be fewer commands issued to this child than the previous one, because, you know, for every rectangle that you draw, you end up saving four draw line commands. Now, for our third toddler, again, a little bit more advanced, this one has the concept, con, uh, concept of doors and windows. So we can simply say, you know, draw, draw a rectangle here, draw a window here, draw a door here, we have a house. And so uh, we have fewer commands still. Now, if we assume that these three children can each execute or can complete one command per second, let's say, some unit time, then obvi obviously the child who has the least number of commands will finish first. So, of course, toddler three will finish before toddler two and two before one. At the end of the day, the outcome will be exactly the same image but they will be, have been generated in different ways and uh, within different amounts of time. So obviously you can see that having more instructions will generally improve the performance or the possible performance of uh, an application. But there are caveats and there are things that you should be aware of. First of all, having more instructions does not necessarily mean that your program will execute faster. and there are actually a number of reasons why this is not true. The first one being the fact that the program has to actually be able to use these instructions. So if, in our analogy, uh, Toddler 3, instead of knowing how to draw windows and doors, instead knew how to draw dogs and cats, that wouldn't improve the performance of drawing a house because there are no cats and dogs in that image. It's the same thing. If you're doing a lot of processing that does a certain thing and you have instructions to do something else, they're not going to help you. They won't ever get used. So in, in that case, our, in fact, toddlers two and three would be exactly the same speed because the relevant instructions are the same. The second thing that's very important has to do with the actual program support itself. Because, of course, the program, the actual binary, has to have those instruction opcodes compiled into it. And this leads to two more problems. The first one is compatibility. So you can imagine that if I write a piece of code, you know, let's say we're writing a piece of code that draws a house, I can assume that the draw line instruction exists. Because, of course, uh, you know, it's, it's been there from the beginning. All processors will have it. I can compile that and that binary will work on any system, on any CPU of that family and it will work, guaranteed. However, if I run that code on a newer CPU that has these extra instructions, 
I'm effectively wasting performance. I'm not utilizing those hardware instructions that I could be using. But on the other hand, if I compile, assuming that those instructions exist, the code will run at the proper, you know, fast speed on the new processors. But if I try to run that binary on an older processor that doesn't support those instructions, then it won't run at all. And so we have this sort of a problem. And the generally accepted solution for this is actually to do both. Uh, you basically include uh, sections of code that have both sets of instructions. And uh, they're actually basically whichever section is, is used is, is determined at runtime by the capabilities of the processor. Uh, so this will bloat the application. The binary becomes larger as memory usage gets, gets higher. But it's sort of the generally accepted solution. The second problem uh, that arises has to do with the compiler support. Um, what we're really talking about here are, are CISC processors, complex instruction set computers. So x86, for example, is a CISC architecture where you have lots of very specialized instructions to do things. And CISC in general, it's very difficult to write a good compiler for CISC because a compiler has to look at the code and determine that it's possible to compile it using these very special specific instructions. And if anyone has, has taken, you know, courses in formal language theory and compiler theory, you'll know that this is an incredibly hard thing to do. And so you, you may actually have portions of your code that would use these, you know, advanced instructions, but the compiler may not be smart enough to actually know how to compile it that way. So there may be, you know, manual optimizations that have to be made if, you know, if you care that much, um, or, you know, performance may just be, be robbed from you and you'll never know it. Um, so there, there's a big problem there. So this is kind of one of the reasons why RISC, the reduced instruction set uh, computing, which is the, the architecture uh, used by ARM, uh, which of course is very prominent in mobile devices, portable uh, battery powered things. Um, in, our, in, in, in RISC, you basically have very, very small instruction set, relatively speaking. And as a result, um, you know, the, the silicon area is a lot lower, power consumption is a lot lower, the programs are larger, but the compilers are easier to write. There's all these trade-offs. Uh, certain people like to compile their entire operating system, all the software on their computer themselves, because by doing that, you can optimize the binaries you generate specifically for your hardware, because you know exactly what's going to be what it's going to be run on. You don't have to worry about compatibility with other instruction sets and you know older processors and things like that. There is almost always a limit though in what you download. Um, like for example, Google, Google Chrome, I believe, uh, mandates that you have at least the SSE three instruction set. Um, so if, if you have a processor that's, that doesn't support that, then the program just won't run. Uh, I think you'd have to compile it yourself if that's even possible. Um, it, it, you know, there there is some uh, some limit that that applications are compiled with nowadays, but uh, there's usually uh, in performance critical areas. There's usually duplicate code uh, in applications where a uh, a new instruction set would make a substantial difference. Uh, most of the instruction sets that are being developed now, uh, at least you know the last few that came out from Intel, are mostly multimedia based. They're for things like video transcoding. Uh, things like that, where, you know, if you can perform an operation like that in hardware, um, you know, it happens so frequently uh, during a, you know, a transcoding operation that uh, your performance improvement is quite large uh, if you can get an application to take advantage of those instructions. So hopefully this helped you understand uh, instruction sets in terms of performance. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.